Hey, it's Brandon with another writing tutorial for fiction writers. Today, we're going to talk about how to format dialogue when writing a short story or a novel. <clears throat> so I've got a little snippet of dialogue here, just some fictional material I created for purposes of this video. But you don't really know it's dialogue from looking at it, do you? There's some stuff that's missing here, and that's what we're going to walk through, how to make dialogue look like dialogue, how to break it up with action, how to include speaker tags. In other words, how to do dialogue professionally when writing a short story or a novel. <clears throat> so the first thing we need are quotation marks. Quotation marks are what set the dialogue apart from narration uh, or the inner thoughts of a character or other aspects of a novel that aren't people speaking. Dialogue, I mean, quotation marks, tell the reader that this is a person speaking. This is dialogue. Without quotation marks, you know, we don't really know that. So that's the first thing you need to do. So we have quotation marks now, but we still have some stuff that's missing, right? We don't know who's saying what. Did you see the front page of the paper this morning? Not yet. Why? What do I need to know? You probably don't, blah, blah, blah. We don't know who these people are. So we got to add some speaker tags. Now, you don't need a speaker tag for every single line of dialogue, especially when there's only two people talking. It's pretty easy when there's two people talking to keep track of who is saying what. But you do need enough speaker tags or dialogue tags to keep the reader from getting confused. So what do I mean by a dialogue tag? Let's just say we add this, Paul said. And then we need another quotation mark there. So now we have, did you see the front page of the paper this morning? Paul said, the New York Times. We could also say Paul asked, since it is a question. Uh, okay, so now we have a Paul. Now this, we don't have a speaker tag for. We could put it in a couple of places. We could put it at the very beginning right here. We could put it at the end. Now, if you want the reader to pause when reading it and to kind of create a rhythm in your dialogue, you can, uh, you can use a speaker tag in the middle of dialogue. So what I did here is I put a speaker tag or dialogue tag right here. Notice that there's a comma inside the quotation marks. And then I had to add another quotation mark here. So I've basically split this line of dialogue up by including the speaker tag in the middle of it. So now what do we have? Did you see the front page of the paper this morning? Paul asked the New York Times. Not yet, Brian said. Why? Or do I want to know? So we could easily put this at the end of the sentence too, just by taking it out, putting it at the end, you know, Brian said. You could do it either way. I kind of like it in the middle there because, like I said, it creates a rhythm with the speaker tag in the middle, I feel. Reading it out loud helps a lot because you can kind of get a feel for how it sounds. Okay, so now we have some dialogue shaping up here. We have our quotation marks. We have our dial, our speaker tags. We know who's talking. It's a conversation between Brian and Paul. We can also break up the dialogue with action. So, you know, if you don't have any little action, it kind of comes off like talking heads, just dialogue back and forth and back and forth. Every once in a while, it's nice to put a little action in there just to help paint the picture, to help paint the scene for the reader. So we could put action anywhere. Let's see, Paul asks the question, if he saw the front page of the paper, there's something not good in the front page, apparently. Brian says he hasn't read the paper yet. So we could add a little action here by saying something like, Paul glanced out the window. Paul glanced out the window. You probably don't but I feel like it's my duty to tell you. So, or we could say, you know, glancing out the window is a little weird because why would he stare out the window when he's talking to someone? Um, Paul hesitated before continuing with a colon. So now we have the scene kind of visual uh, manifesting in the reader's mind. We can visualize it a little better. Paul hesitated before continuing. You probably don't, but I feel like it's my duty to tell you. So he's breaking some bad news about something that was in the paper. And then it goes on. It seems your ex-wife leaked a story about the lawsuit. The press are all over it. 
Um, so this is going to be a surprising moment. We could also add some action to this one here to help show Brian's emotional response. If he just says, you're kidding, how did she even know about it? It's kind of robotic, you know? So we could say something like, Brian's eyes widened. You're kidding. How did she even know about it? Could add an exclamation point if you really want to emphasize the emotional response there. So you can see it's starting to shape up more like a scene with well-written dialogue. We know, we know what's happening. We know who's speaking. Uh, we know we can kind of see the visualize the scene in our head because we're starting to add action to it. And these are just some of the things you need to think about when you're writing dialogue for a short story or a novel. We've kind of done it here live on the fly, but I hope this has helped you pick up some of the key formatting uh, steps that you need to take when writing dialogue. You make sure you have your quotation marks. The punctuation usually goes inside the quotation mark. If it's a comma like this, before a speaker tag, it always goes inside the quotation mark. If it's a question mark, it goes inside the quotation marks if it's the person, the dialogue is actually a question. There are cases where the question mark might go outside the quotation mark, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So if the dialogue is in the form of a question, that question mark goes inside the quotation marks. So does the comma. Uh, you could even put the speaker tag at the beginning, which sometimes can be a little weird, but it's doable. You just, in this case, you put the speaker tag, Brian said, comma, not yet. Why or do I want to? Like I said, sometimes that's a little weird for the reader. So I would stick with what the most uh, natural common form is that readers are used to seeing. And that is where the speaker tag follows the dialogue in most, in most cases anyway. Every once in a while, you might have a, a reason to break that up. So we've got quotation marks. We've got proper punctuation inside the quotation marks in most cases. We've got uh, the speaker tags to let us know who's doing the speaking. And again, you don't need the speaker tags on every single line of dialogue because, you know, it's pretty easy to see. Paul asks a question, Brian answers. Now there's another speaker because we drop down a line and we know who that is. It's got to be Paul because it's only the two people talking. And we've also got a little, you know, Brian's eyes widened. You're kidding. How did she even know about that? We've got a little bit of action inserted here. Action helps break up the dialogue. Sometimes you can even pause between lines of dialogue and describe the scene or what's happening, or maybe someone walks by, or maybe they stop to watch, you know, something happen. The waiter comes to the table and they stop talking. You can insert little bits like that to help paint the scene so that the dialogue is not just talking heads back and forth. So there you go, how to format dialogue, the basics, fiction writing 101. Hope you like this video. If you do, subscribe, because I'm gonna be doing a lot more on the page, actual live writing exercises like this to help you learn the basics of fiction writing. Thanks for watching, take care.